Um, witness, state your name and occupation, brother. Ah! Don't hide under the table, Maya. Oh, well, there's room for me down here too. I, um, I would you. What'd you say to me? Nothing. I didn't say nothing. Honest. Who would have guessed that fear would induce a bad Brooklyn <laughs> accent in the judge? <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. I got business to take care of, you hear me? So what the hell called me into this hole? Was it you, Spocky? Act no, of course not. It was... the... judge. Your Honor! Oh dear, I, uh, I seem to have dropped my pen! Oh, where on earth is it? Don't mind me, carry on the proceedings. That's it. We're doomed. <laughs> Maybe you say you hear me! I said... Who the hell was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout, we can all hear you. Eh, what'd you say? There's no point struggling. You're caught in the snare. The reluctant snare of the law. Such a smooth that taste. No good. And I'm the one that holds you in. He's such a smooth operator. Smooth criminal. Yeah. Too cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're a criminal, we've been hit by a smooth criminal. Yep. Don't let me get the better of you, Nick. <laughs> Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, Craig? Incident? I ain't not nothing about no stinking incident, mess boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial, Maggie Burke? Maggie, who? I got more important things to do than watch cartoon dramas. Of course! Well, perhaps you could give your testimony then. Tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. <laughs> Phoenix, right? You're the one who set this up, didn't ya? You just gotta regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur, you hear what I'm saying? Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. My pants are toast. <laughs> Get a grip, Nick! Maybe I should have worn some brown pants. It's just shit pants. It's just a, it's a, it's a pants made out of feces. Ew! Yeah, how about that? I uh, know nothing but no murder. I started on business in December last year. Spent all my time, my, all my time in my office. Got wheels lined up for cash from 10 million every day. You just want to check my alibi? Just ask me later. Ah, at last I found my pen. Now I can write my gossip journal again. Ah! Oh crap, I dropped my pen again! Please refrain from shouting like that! I know the kind of games that guy in blue plays. That low life ain't no lie. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. Low life? Me? What the fuck, me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna pay you $30,000, and you're just gonna borrow cash from me. Uh, well, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. I don't think it ain't gonna hurt when you get tangled with the tiger. Hmm. Huh. I'm a good spectator, sport. Just a bit. That's really not. This witness is, how can I put it, a hungry tiger roaming in the urban jungle. You know, his bedside, and he'll bite everyone's head off. Yours, too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. Well, fine. You just better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. I'm not splitting now. I ain't gonna catch my bus. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of witness testimony. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick. Come out from under the desk there, Maya. Alright, the tiger's alibi. Oh boy. I don't know nothing about no murder. No Ooh, I'm gonna save now. Alright then. Cause now we're at this kind of point in the game. Mm -hmm. Do not turn off the power. He doesn't know anything. I was tied up with business in December last year. I spent all my time in my office. Whales lined up to Bob Tash from Tenderlander every a single, single day. day. You just wanna check my alibi? Just ask for you later. Hmm. Excuse me. Hmm? This statement? Uh, this statement. 
One more. Fuck. This thing. Maybe, yeah. Spit all my time. Oh. Yeah, about that. So the last year. About that. About that. Mm -hmm. Do it? Yep. Yeah. No, that's wrong. Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck, me? Okay, fine, fuck you. We got this huge, giant fucking piece of evidence. Oh dear. Mm. Must I be on the wrong track? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Can you just press it then? Let's try. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my testicles is. Sharp. So you talking about Viola Cav Cadaverini? She was everything in my scheduler. Sam, but mainly in the office. That's what it says. So that's what it was. That seems like a rather... Uh... Sketchy schedule. Ah. Please don't kill me! Here he goes again. Hmm, what the tiger did all December isn't the issue. So now what? Press it. Yeah, we press. Mr. Tigre! What'd you want? Uh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. Oh. This is a dead end train, you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day too? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. I know you. F I never. I never set foot outside. That means all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. This ain't. I ain't never seen that kid before. I do believe the witness's statement was important. Um, Mr. Gardo, if you could please. Mr. Tiger, of course I asked you to add the last testament, the last statement to your testimony. <laughs> Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, Your Honor, and ask him yourself. Believe in the Phoenix right, who believes in you! I was in the office too, never saw that kid before. Did now we did can did did did. Now we can post that. Yay! Falcon Punch! Mr. Tigre! You claim you didn't know Mr. Glan Elk. It appears that Mr. Ogg knew you. What? Mr. Ogg left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. Dated December 3rd. D December 3rd? That's... That's the day of the murder! <laughs> so, Mr. Tigre, I submit that you did, indeed, know one Mr. Glenn Elg. Because on the very day of the incident, you met with him. Oh, snap, son. Yeah. What'd you Not bad! He's actually not bad! Sorry? I was just missing with you, see how good you were. Did you hear that, He said you're not bad! That's one compliment I can do without! Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness, you remember under oath, lies will not be tolerated. Use comedy lie! Is that what you're doing? Ruh roll! So you're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth? I say I'm dead serious. You better believe that's the truth. <laughs> then I'd say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black milk. Delicious. That is why you testified for the court case, Mr. Tiger. Oh yes. Um, would you mind indulging the court witness? You never actually met the victim. Well, that's gotta be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. <clears throat> I ain't no lot. I never met Glenn Elk. <clears throat> there was this, there's some lame guy with that name though. He wanted to borrow cash from me. Except for me with the guy. I'm at office, tend to lend her. I went around for him, but he ain't ever showed. I ain't never even been to Trade Enjoy. He's here. 
Oh, but guess what we have? I see, that seems all perfectly logical, though. You had arranged to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it's pretty hard to keep from what means when you're dead. <laughs> Very well, you may begin your cross examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. So let's save. Did not tell you I got a big deal going on today. Going down today. I ain't making you make my bus now. I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. That bill's gonna straight to you, right? Car. So we save, skip to the very end. Wait, that's not the last statement. There we go. And then... Matches! That was easy, come on! Mr. Tigre. Is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What are you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. What? If you've really never been to Trey Bien before, what was a book of their restaurant's matches doing on your desk? You've been snooping around my stuff now too, wise guy. What are you doing? My ball and chain? Ain't no broad controlling me. Order! Order! Well, witness, I think it's time you start telling us the truth, don't you? Gah! Sorry, I tell me sorry, forgive me. I ain't no pussycat. I don't know, I don't go back on what I said. Hmm, but okay, I was at the joint that day. What? But listen, good eye, I might have been the bust on them at the kid. Well, well. Looks like an order came from another testimony. I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elk that day, and he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. I was supposed to meet this wind kid at the restaurant that afternoon. Now I opened the door to the jar, I saw one ugly scene. Guy was laid all over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be, so I split. I had the cop signs on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. I see. You did actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it! If I wait around here any longer, I am not gonna even make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Ha ha ha, no problem. Anytime try presses you on something, Riven, I'll see you pay the penalty. Mr. Gordo, that's my job! Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call it guilty. So do it! Yes, sir! That was easy. The special way express ain't cheap, right? It's just so easy. Just so you know, since you're paying. Oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? No. Damn it. Okay. Supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. I opened the door that to the joint. I saw one ugly scene. I was laid out over the table. If it can't agree. Place on some hard ready is gonna be so I split. Okay, the cops are on the way out. I'm gonna straight back to my office. So he's saying that he saw the end result of the murder. Yep. He was there at the very end. Of course that's hogwash, but still. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> we have to figure out how to disprove that. Yep. With science. And how do we do that? Scientifically. But later we called you and opened the door, so what do we see? It so we let's see. That afternoon. That doesn't seem. That doesn't seem That's not out wrong. of place. Yeah. Open the doors to the joint. I saw one ugly scene. Hmm. 
Guy laid over the table, stiff as concrete. If you were to put something hotter in there, it was gonna be so split. Cops on our way out, man. Straight from my back of my office. Go back one? I figured if this is a fire, that was gonna be so easy. Hmm. Good God, we've been doing this for a while. Yep, I'm telling you. This is gonna be super long. I told you, didn't I? What could it possibly be? Figured if the place wasn't hot already. I feel like there isn't anything inherently wrong about this statement. No, yeah. Hmm. Guy was laid, over, laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. This says that he saw the end result of the murder. Yeah. So I feel like there's something wrong with this. Let's look at our evidence for a second. So I've got a badge. Okay. Nagatama. Okay. Sports paper. MC Bomber. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Not helpful. Nothing. Not helpful. Nope. No. 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 Still no. Oh, we could have not seen. Oh, I'll, I'll save that for later. What does scene take? Okay. So, no. Nope. Thunder Boy Search Maggie. Maggie Bird. Nope. 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 No. 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 Hmm, it's not. Okay. No. Hmm. Okay, so I don't call it that. Look at your video. Yeah. Why? Cause fuck you. What are you, Delta Airlines? Mm -hmm. Why? Okay, you know what? Okay, let's try that. Let's try the the thing I said earlier. Uh, the floor plans. I'm gonna say yeah, first. Yeah, floor plans. On the statement. Yeah, on that statement. Cause who knows? Present. Yeah. Do it. Do it in his face. This? Yep. Ooh. Really? You're something of a loan correcting plot. Wow! It's fantastic, man. I can't speak. No, you can't. I agree with that statement. Heat's getting to me. Mm-hmm. You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tigre? No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. Eh. And no one escapes the Phoenix's clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this trait? A new line of irrelevant questioning? You're irrelevant! No, you are. No, you are! These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You see that you. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. I was right that, for once. That would explain it. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigre. From there, your field of vision would have covered an area something like... This. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Mm-mm. Unfortunately for you, that's not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables... Is a tall partition. Why, that's true! Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. So, from the entrance of Trabian, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day, because you met with him. Raw! I just forgot the old man's testimony yesterday. The victim was alone at his table. 
but the defense just proved the point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glen Elf, but a fake. What? What in the blazes? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim that he had just killed and acted out of charade. That will do! This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glen Elg, and then impersonated his victim in a performance for Mr. Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. Well, it's... it's... it's this guy. Yeah. Obviously. The killer is Fury of Tigre. No one else could have done it. That's basically been every single case that we have ever done. Yeah. Well, witness! <laughs> now that's cute. Hmm. Oh, my breath smells like goddamn. Okay. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you don't understand. The tiger is king of the jungle. Sorry, Dave's just saying it again. Come on, you got the guts. You can't threaten me, Mr. Tigre. It's the vets. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright! Sounds to me like it must be your name. You just got the guts, I give you that! Mr. Wright! Do not leave me to handle this alone! <laughs> Perhaps I can end this in person. Mr. Gordo, help! Hmm. Just go back over. Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see the victim. Didn't just see the victim. Oh, no, 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 no. Serving go by him a job of Chino, but she's put something in it. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some what pattern in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the cheese put the poison in the coffee. Yes, it was the waitress who poisoned the coffee. Very impressive, Mr. Gordo. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. <laughs> Found your pen last trait. It was in my pocket. Ahem. <clears throat> but anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glen Elk, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glen Elk was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who the was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? Fucking us. <laughs> Who's this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee of Tender Lender. You're just making a big mistake. Do you know who Viola's grandfather is? I bet you better go. You better be going home in the armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bird, has stated the following. When I looked, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it was true! There was another customer there in the last drawing. Um, she was sort of creepy. She had a kind of cackling laugh. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen. The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. And the radio show he was supposedly listening to half an hour after was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real, and once for show. And Mr. Fury of Tigre, the only person who could committed the crime, was you. Witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. 
you... Sorry? You saw right. I could do with a guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to try to jet to get to my meeting now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about. He's got all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you missed out on one important thing. That can't be! I was in the joint that day, and I met that kid too. But I couldn't have poisoned him, you see it? What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? <laughs> well, troublemaker. Troublemaker? Looks like we're gonna need another one for the road. One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Indeed. It better be super hot. Witness, you explain yourself to the court. I'll give you one more chance to testify, and it better be good. So just what happened at, at that day at Trispian between yourself and the victim? Mm. Ties to the victim. Mm. Yeah, I loan El Cash a hundred thousand dollars. That day, there was a dude to have a little chat. The kid, can't, the kid had to hit his payment date, see? So that, so anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to fuck the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know, real lucky. That way she's had done what she done, and it would have been over. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Ugg was $50,000. <laughs> yeah, well, you's got, you's got the Vic to take into account. It just builds up fast, you know? That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice as principal. Light speed! Hmm. It's still you. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. Still you. No. There, he got that half a million just in time. Still you. Mm-hmm. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? He has to have one, but what is it? Easy. Yeah, that's it's really easy. Because we know his secret. Cash. There's do that little chat. Payback. No way to pay. About to flatten him. Half a million bucks. Save. I assume it's going to be this statement, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm also assuming the whole penalty thing is still going. Maybe. Want me to save? Yep. Having fun watching me flounder in a game of Tetris? Maybe. <laughs> hmm. Got lucky. The waitress, you mean? The girl with the pet glasses and the fence chair. Who else could I mean? If she hadn't gotten away, do something bad of being bad of boom, over and done with. Maybe I should push a little on this. 